here we go. Um, so the title of today's sermon is Worship Breathing in the Spirit. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, when God creates the world, we are told that God told, we are told that God's spirit was hovering over the face of the waters and that there existed at that point a dark void. The word for spirit in Hebrew um, is often the word ruach, R-U-A-C-H. And it's often translated as spirit or wind or breath. And this word breath is in our uh, psalm today, but it's also in many other places throughout the scriptures. In Ezekiel chapter 37, for instance, the Spirit breathes life into dry bones. And in the New Testament, in John 20, we're told that Jesus breathes upon his disciples and says, receive the Holy Spirit. This connection between breath and the Holy Spirit is there throughout the scriptures. There is a well-known saying, as I live and breathe, that we use as people, and it's often used to support some sort of truth. So I can assert that such and such is, as I live and breathe, that is the truth, is the kind of idea behind it. But spiritually, the truth is, if we are truly Christians, we breathe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of our God. We breathe in it as we sing and as we uh, pray and as we live and move our lives each day. The Spirit is the one that confirms or guarantees that we are spiritually eternal, that we have a vibrant spiritual life within us. It's the Spirit that guides us and offers us comfort. It's the Spirit that heightens our conscience and helps us to choose to avoid um, committing sin. It's the Spirit that fills us with a peace that passes all natural understanding. And it's the Spirit that wells up within us that reminds us of the reasons why we should praise and adore and glorify our God, our Creator. God is the one who gives us purpose and gives us meaning in our lives. This is what the psalmist wants us to grasp in verse 6 when he says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. You see, it's an imperative. It's not a if you fancy it. It's everything that has breath. It should be used to praise God. That's because that's what humans have been created to do. And I suspect generally that each of us in some way is grateful that we are alive. Now, gratitude as children of God should be expressed as we breathe out words of thanksgiving, words of truth about our amazing God and his graciousness. You might have noticed that that word's quite often repeated in this psalm. Thirteen times the word's praise is aimed at God. I was reading a uh, Bible scholar, Robert Davison, this week, and he said, Never forget that central to authentic faith, faith is the praise of God. I heard so many people over the years trying to justify their absence from church and the Sabbath by saying, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. The psalmist, however, tells us that you do have to praise your God to have authentic faith in him. So in verse 1, it's declared, praise God in his sanctuary. Of course, this is partly why so many Christians are at a loss during this pandemic. The sanctuary do doors are closed once again. And it's not right, and it's not good for us as Christians to be locked out from 
being God's people, praising him in the sanctuary on the Sabbath. But, you know, at these times, um, uh, uh, there are difficult decisions to make. And so we can praise God in our homes and look forward to the time when we can gather together again in his house. I guess it made me think this week about the Hebrew exiles who were taken away from their uh, temple in Zion. But they found a way to praise God and we can see it in the Psalms in Psalm 136 and 137. By the rivers of Babylon where we sat down and we remembered worshipping God in Zion. So I'm wondering how we are coping with singing in our homes. Are we able to praise God authentically? There's no one there to watch sometimes. Or are we pining after what we would really like to do is to praise God through singing together and leading worship together in his sanctuary? Now this praise the Lord um, is covered in one word in the Hebrew, and that is hallelujah. And we've been singing about uh, uh, praising uh, God through our hallelujahs. And it occurs in this psalm um, a number of times. We are called to do this, uh, praising God, our hallelujahs, in the mighty heavens. And that, that can be translated in as the, the whole expanse that God has created. Um, so the earth and the heavens and the, the whole uh, universe and all the universes, we have to praise God everywhere really. Is what it's saying. So yes, we praise God in our homes, but we praise God as we go out in our walks, as we're in the bath or the shower, when we receive good news over the phone, as we celebrate good news, and as we pray, we uh, also um, sing our hallelujahs and give thanks to God. Now I guess, um, Many of us will be aware that there are a number of people who are under a lot of pressure during this pandemic. I guess the ones that are most often highlighted are those in the NHS uh, and also those in our education systems um, who are having to cope with all kinds of different ways of uh, uh, doing their job. Now, of course, um, there are great demands on many people in different trades and different, uh, uh, who have different functions during this pandemic. It's when pressures come that sometimes we can push out uh, other things that are important, maybe time with family, but also spiritually our Sabbath rest and our daily hallelujahs um, are important too um, when we sit down and we praise God in our personal prayer and as we read his scriptures each day. It's a real danger to put God to the side because work pressures or other demands uh, are, are, are so much to the fore. However, we can never forget that God is in ultimate control. He has surpassing greatness. He has performed miraculous interventions whenever he chooses. So if we're wrapped up in the world's demands, it's most likely then that our praise for the gracious God and his powerful acts will be so much more inadequate because they're not at the forefront of our thinking. And as we move on to look at verse 2 together, let us not forget this call to worship. For it takes away our spiritual breath. And when we don't breathe well, our health is truly in danger. We can gain the things of this world, but we're told in the scriptures that these things rust and decay and we cannot take them with us when we leave this world. And as well as trying to gain these things that rust and decay, we lose the treasures of the eternal blessings that God would love to shower down upon his children. 
there's a version of the Bible called The Message. And sometimes it's particularly pertinent. I was reading this week a verse that I love in The Message, 2 Timothy 3 and 16. And here's what it says. Every part of Scripture is God-breathed and useful in one way or another, showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes, training us to live God's way. Our Sabbath devotion and daily interactions in God's Word, guided by His Spirit, cause us to have many reasons to fill our hearts and our minds and our breath with praise. As we move on to verses 3 to 5, we see that worship lifts us up before our powerful and great God. It causes us to utilize our musical talents and our creative abilities, things like dance, to celebrate because God's mercies are new every morning. Even when the world around us is in chaos, we have reasons to trust in him and to give thanks and praise to him. For Christians living like this, as Paul says in Romans 8 and verse 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? And if you're on the, the ball this morning, you'll realize that that was the words in that first hymn. If God is for us, then who can be against us? So we are not depressed. We're not downcast. We're not caught up in low self-esteem or shame or grief or in our suffering. No, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us and whom we know personally that he is our God. As we breathe as we praise, as we live each day in Christ and for his good purposes. I was challenged this week to ask myself this question and maybe you would do the same. Do we praise God on the Sabbath? Is that the only day that we praise God or do we do it each and every day? Do we sing? Do we use our talents? Do we look for opportunities to share him? because we are grateful to all that he's done in our lives and the lives of our brothers and sisters who we've watched become Christians and grow in their faith? Do we give our time to him each day as an act of worship? Whether that's our time in spiritual uh, things like reading the Bible or prayer, or whether that's giving our time to show that we're Christians through our love for others. Do we do that in prayer? Do we spend time before the throne of grace, worshipping God and asking him to intervene and to uh, comfort and help others? And as we read his holy word, do we really let him penetrate our soul? Do we really desire to live our lives according to his will as an act of worship and sacrifice to our God. Remember that was one of the themes in last week's first uh, look at this theme of worship, to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to the one who sacrificed himself for us. So in verses 3 to 5, we end um, really where we began. All these instruments, uh, an orchestra, and I don't know if uh, if it's right to uh, put ourselves as one of these different uh, instruments, but, you know, I've done that metaphorically today. I might be the clanging symbol of verse 5. Maybe you're the sweet melodic flute. But whatever we are together, we can become a, a harmonious and rich praise to the one true God the God who deserves our hallelujahs. And I hope and pray that we'll go out this week with that mantra of verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise him every day. 
whether it's in the shower or on the phone, whether it's as you invite him to come into your life and to teach you from the scriptures, whether it's by uh, speaking or praying for a neighbour, that everything has breath. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.